Hello and welcome to the big picture. The Indo-Pakistan relationship seems to have reached another low. After some very encouraging signs of the ties looking up, when the two NSAs met after the Patan Court attack and the subsequent developments, including exchange of crucial intelligence. However, following the visit of the joint investigative team from Pakistan probing the Patan Court attacks, suddenly things have turned sour. The statement of the Pakistan High Commissioner Abdul Basit yesterday here in the capital that the talks between the two countries have been suspended and also making it clear that a reciprocal visit by an Indian investigation team to Pakistan was virtually out of question has stunned observers. What made the High Commissioner make such statements when the Pakistan Foreign Office was still talking of a possible engagement with the two foreign secretaries? Where does the relationship stand today? We will discuss all this today with Rana Banerjee, former Special Secretary, Cabinet Secretariat, Sheshadri Chari, National Executive Member, BJP. On the phone line from Agra is Vivek Karju, former Ambassador. And from Karachi, Pakistan is Musharraf Zaidi. Welcome to all of you. Mr. Karju? Yes, Mr. Karju, you know, this, we, we discussed this some time back when, uh, when the Pakistan investigation team was here. But now, you know, you were, you were very sceptical at that time. Now, do you feel vindicated or what? No, no, there's no question of feeling vindicated in diplomacy or in such assessments. Uh, but I uh, think that uh, our policy uh, towards uh, Pakistan was uh, rooted in wrong assumptions. And all that has happened uh, since the visit of the JIT to India has only uh, established that these assumptions were wrong. Uh, I think much was being made of the contacts between uh, Mr. Doval and his Pakistani counterpart, General Janjua. It was assumed, uh, for whatever reason, that uh, Janjua's appointment was an indication that uh, the army was on board with this process of reconciliation and normalization. It is true that the Pakistanis have for a long time wanted contacts at the intelligence level. But clearly, uh, the priority now is to give as much publicity as they can to this entire concoction of uh, Kulbhushan Jadav. And you please uh, note that, uh, and Rana can correct me if I'm wrong, but please note that never does a national security advisor run intelligence operations and never is he targeted personally by another country as Pakistan has sought to do. Uh, yes, of course, they fired the gun of the shoulder of Jadav. Though Jadav has not said on tape, has not named uh, Mr. Doval on tape. Now, all this shows that the Pakistani generals are, are, are absolutely non-serious about any normalization of ties between India and, and Pakistan. Okay. Mr. Shahadri Chari, were the assumptions wrong on the basis of which this, the, the, these moves were made? <clears throat> no, I, I agree with what uh, Ambassador Karju said. His last sentence, especially that the Pakistani generals are not in favor of normalization of relations between India and Pakistan. And this was not an unknown fact. And it is no secret that comes out of some Pandora's box. We all no, but this, there was an that assumption that the, the generals were on board. No, yes, yes. I, 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 I still feel that the generals were on board right from day one. But the Pakistani political establishment did not want it to be said it in so many words. But this time the political establishment was coerced by the army to say that look, we are part and parcel of this peace talks or whatever you call it. So we want to be in the game. And we want to make India known that look, we are here. So you cannot keep us aside and talk to the political establishment. India was all the time trying to tell them that look, if Pakistani army wants to do some mischief on our borders or do something, we are prepared to take on it and we did it also. In the last two years, we have given the Pakistani army a fitting reply in, an, in, in a manner they understand. So, what, what was the, so, what, where, where is no, the There have been hot is? pursuits, there have been all these things and they even ran up to the USA to tell them that look, this is what they are doing and all that. So they have understood, they have got the message. And we very clearly said that as far as non-state actors are concerned, they will be dealt with seriously. As far as the political establishment in Pakistan, in Islamabad is concerned, we are prepared to talk to them. 
and we want them. But all said and done, the political establishment is now under totally under the control of the army. And therefore, the army wants to let everybody know that it is they who call the shots. And this is the reason for it. Therefore, it's no secret that we did not know about it. Now it is for the political establishment to come up and give us what they think is right. If they cannot do it, I think we will have to engage with, continue with the engagement with Pakistan, but at the same time, keep all our options open. Mr. Banerjee, what are the options now? And, uh, and, and do you agree that, you know, this, the, the, this assumption, what Mr. Karju talks, talked about the assumptions, and what Chari is saying that, you know, the, the army was supposed to have been on board, but now they are not. No, while the facts uh, enumerated by Mr. Karju are correct, uh, I have a slightly different view on the uh, assumptions or the uh, deductions that are being made. Uh, the, what has happened recently seems to me to be a deliberate doublespeak on part of uh, the establishment, and I mean the army establishment, because they are, seem to be impatient yeah, so, about... Sorry, sorry, sorry to intervene. We are, here is a Pakistan high commissioner sitting in Delhi yes. who makes this statement. Yes. And where does the army come in here? So no, which, he which has, does it mean I, that I the believe, army and yes. the establishment are also... Yes, on the I same, believe same that book. he is a seasoned diplomat. He would not have made this statement without getting a clearance from back home about saying this. At the same time, the foreign officers come out with a weak, uh, you know, denial that the talks are also in process. If you go back a little further with the report that, that appeared in the Pakistan today about a source giving a contrarian view, that again was denied by a very weak statement from the foreign office. So this is deliberate double speak. Pakistan NSA in a seminar has, has talked about, uh, you know, the global peace being threatened by military acquisitive in impulses of India. So they are getting impatient. If Madam For Sushma Swaraj, Foreign Minister, went and said that the comprehensive peace dialogue should be resumed, they believe that now having sent the JIT and collected evidence and all that, India should make a move to announce at least a timetable for the two foreign secretaries to meet to decide on the schedule of subsequent talks on various issues. So that is why they are doing this double speak. Mr. Zaidi, are you there? Yes. Okay, Mr. Zaidi, yes. is this double speak? What is this? You know, wh how, how do we take this? Uh, here was here was was India, you know, inviting the joint investigation team. A completely unprecedented thing happened when India invited the Pakistan investigation team to come to India. You know, allowed them access five days. They spent here. They go back, and then this happens. Uh, how do we how do we read this? What is there in the mind of the Pakistan establishment, army, whatever? Well, I mean, the first thing, you know, when I joined the, the phone call, the discussion that was taking place was, uh, you know, Vivek Kartu, my dear Vivek Kartu was talking about uh, uh, the Indian spy that was apprehended in Pakistan. And, and the discussion from there seemed to be mostly focused on, you know, what the generals are thinking, what the army is thinking. Uh, I, I think, first of all, uh, Indian, view, Indian listeners, viewers, friends in India uh, should... I don't expect Indians to have the same view as a Pakistani would, but as a Pakistani, I think it's important for me to just convey the fact that, you know, when an Indian spy is apprehended uh, in, in Pakistan, and Indian friends uh, spend, you know, so much time talking about what in Pakistani generals want, I think it, it's a little bit unfair because, of course, you know, the discussion that, you know, some quarters, many quarters in Pakistan are having right now is what is it that the Indian generals want sending, sending spies to Pakistan? What does that mean? So that, that would be the first uh, sort of thing that I would like to raise uh, on your show. The, uh, the answer to your question, I think, is, is more complicated. Because I think that what we're experiencing over the last uh, three years is a constant effort by Prime Minister Kareem and Prime Minister Modi to create new ground in this relationship. And what we're seeing are the relics and signs of history, new passage old items that keep getting thrown up. Uh, to disrupt the process that Prime Minister Tariq and Prime Minister Modi are trying to embark on. Who, who, who is behind this disruption? So I think that it's quite clear that non-state actors, the ones that, uh, you know, do things like the Khan Court, uh, are certainly behind this because they, their, uh, their shops will be closed once Pakistan and India become two normal nations 
and inshallah hopefully two great nations that are cooperating with each other trading with each other allowing each other uh, young people to study in each other's universities allowing each other's artists to unmolested so, so perform in each other's countries so zaidi you are so, saying so that the non state, -state actors, the non state actors you know in, in pakistan obviously non state actors uh, you know that attack cases of patan for the assumption uh, on, you know seems to be uh, with with lots of history uh, behind it that these non state actors uh, are are certainly uh, intent on disrupting uh, the process but that's only one of the constituencies i think that there are a lot of people in both countries who are not terrorists who are not non state actors but who work in uh, the respective government in india and pakistan and the respective security establishment who have a 20th century view of india and pakistan and who have a 20th century set of solutions which is that everything has to go through the foreign ministry and every statement has to be poured over and discussed and deliberated to death and in the meantime both countries and their young people are denied the opportunity to engage with okay so i think I... what prime minister sharif and prime minister modi are trying to do is to is to challenge that uh, that Uh, that orthodoxy, and to actually say that neither non-state actors nor state actors in New Delhi or in uh, Islamabad will be allowed to get in the way of what is the future of this region, which is a normal and interconnected region. Okay, I mean uh, that's very interesting what you say, Mr. Mr. Banerjee. The Indian spy being caught there, you know, that seems to be one of the is is that one of the, one of the reasons why this suddenly has turned sad. I wouldn't think so. I would. Uh, I mean, in all fairness, they will. You know, yes. They, he's talking about in the, the spy, which is which is which is one of the reasons. They no, I I understand, Mr. Sharif Zaidi's perception that this could jeopardize the situation, and they there is a negative perception about this in Pakistan. But uh, you know, in the overall context of. Uh, relationships between two countries uh, the activities of one spy in another country and another country spy in our, our country these are comparatively small issues which we have to take in our stride and move on these things keep on happening but these should not be allowed to hamper the bigger uh, issues which uh, you know um, mr zaidi has spoken of in such eloquent ways about an ideologically positive turn which needs to be given Uh, to the process of engagement so i don't think that uh, the aspect of uh, uh, or the timing of uh, you know uh, this incident should be allowed to come in the way on the other hand i would think that you know for a long time the pakistani authorities have been alleging about you know the indian hand in baluchistan but they did not have any body to you know produce evidence to lend credibility to their claims and somehow this time they seem to have produced a body with an indian connection no, how they have done it i don't know no i think i think it's a very calibrated move on the part of the pakistan uh, establishment no, but you have to you have to establishment mr zaidi is being very fair he is talking about non state actors from pakistan who I, seem to be creating you know who seem to have a vested interest in ensuring that this peace process doesn't continue in a smooth manner no it's 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 again a well known fact that the non state actors in pakistan over a period of time have now moved away from their masters and they are trying to ascertain their own strength the capabilities of creating nuisance creating uh, attack uh, modules and also creating uh, uh, sort of um, uh, terror modules without uh, uh, which are operational which can be operational without the consent of the their masters that is the army or One the is mr banerjee would you agree with that partially yes i would because there are there are increasing uh, you know evidence of some of the younger more uh, radical elements not listening to their masters this was evident even during 2611 mumbai uh, about 6 8 years ago and uh, it may have enhanced some of these tendencies may have enhanced okay this usually happens when these insur insurgency movements lose their initial um, uh, ideological backing and financial backing so this is what is happening to some of the non state okay, actors let me, let i uh, think and, okay, and moreover that is the reason why uh, there is a increasing problem in baluchistan and uh, fata area especially and that is creating a problem for the army so now army needs some face 
to show to the world that look india is doing this and that is why they have successfully the managed to kidnap a ordinary businessman and nobody travels with a passport this is obviously a planted whole story and that they are trying to tom tom to the whole world but they are not getting any success as okay. far as this thing is concerned Ma mr kadju look mr. i have I find a, a couple Mr. Kadju, uh, not state actors. Yes, yes, I'm coming yes. to that. I'm coming to that. But uh, I find Musharraf Zaidi's exhortation uh, very, very uh, touching. But uh, on non-state actors and also the uh, the clarifications given by uh, by Rana and Mr. Shishadri, uh, the fact is that if these were only non-state actors, then why is protection being given to Masood Azhar? How does one reconcile this with all this belief about non-state actors now being on the loose? Yes, of course, non-state actors are, are not inanimate creatures. But let us not forget that this distinction itself is false and provides the Pakistanis an alibi. Masood Azhar has been protected by the Chinese on behalf of the Pakistanis. And you had yesterday itself. And why are we forgetting this? The Pakistan Abdul Basit saying that what the Chinese did was right. Is does and that show that, that non-state actors are on the loose? If that was the case, then the first thing they should have done was hold Masood Azhar, not venerate this man. And mind you, Masood Azhar is a person whose organization is supposed to have targeted a former Pakistan army chief as well as uh, the person who was a president too, Musharraf. So okay. all this, let's not get taken in by this. Okay. I don't know why we get taken in by, by no, this. No, no. Well, let me, let me. No, let me. Loose and, let and Musharraf Zaidi is being fair. Let no, me, let I me. I only want to make okay. one small clarification. Yes. I, 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 I'm entirely in agreement with uh, Ambassador Kadju. It's nobody's argument that the Pakistani army has come to uh, the conclusion that we have no control whatsoever over these non-state actors. No, that is not what I'm saying. What we are trying to say is, there are elements within the, the, the non-state actor who, groups who, 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 which who, have to go out of it. it okay. This is all the more reason no, no, why they have to hold on to no, Masood Azhar. Let me get Zaidi. Mr. Zaydi Sattaz has also said uh, that Masood Azhar has been detained. I mean, he con he admitted as but, much by to an Indian channel. Right, but you know, we, we have seen him uh, operating on you know outside the outside any prison or something like that, yeah. Masood Azhar. So, uh, how much we need to take that seriously, we don't know. But Mr. Zaidi, would you like to react to what Mr. Uh, Karju says? That... That, you know, if you're talking of non-state actors, then why is the Pakistan government, in, in fact, you know, help, getting help to ensure that Masood Azhar gets protected in the UN against that resolution in the UN by Chinese? I, I would, uh, no, I, I mean, I wouldn't like to respond to uh, Vivek Kaji. Vivek Kaji is a wonderful man. But I think, like I said, I think there are many people in, in India and in Pakistan who are essentially stuck in the 1980s and 1990s and who want to sustain what is, is frankly unsustainable for a continent of one plus billion people, 1.5, 1.6 billion people. That includes Bangladesh, it includes Afghanistan, it includes India, and of course it includes Pakistan. And, you know, to be held hostage to the narrative and the rhetoric that has held us hostage for so many years, I think would undermine... Uh, the potential for this reason. I think that the JIT investigation team that went to India represents the most progress we've made operationally uh, in the bilateral relationship since 1965. People can deny it all they want. I think that the fact that the Tadhuri said what he did about uh, Jesh Mohammed and what's happening in South Punjab is historic. And the fact that there is now an operation underway in South Punjab as we speak. Uh, which has been uh, something that many naysayers like Vivek Kaju have been saying would never happen. People also said nothing would ever happen and not really the Khan. Both those things have happened as well. Mrs. So, Zaidi. Time after time, what Pakistan is showing is that on its calendar, when it is right for Pakistan, it will take the action that will be right for Pakistan. And that what's right for Pakistan, when democratic leaders are making decisions in this country, will be right for India, right for Afghanistan, right for the region, and right for the world. But so Mr. Mr. Zaidi, Mr. Zaidi, sorry, sorry to intervene, but you know the question of what has happened. You know, now the 
your high commissioner sitting here in India in, in Delhi says that you know that an Indian team having to wanting to go to Pakistan to look into this Patan code attack is not you know he has virtually ruled it out ruled out that possibility you know it was supposed to be on a reciprocal basis that the JIT was invited to India now they are coolly saying that you know there is no, no there is no recipro there is no reciprocity. No, no, that's not really what Bapit did. What Bapit did was he said that given the fact that since uh, December 25th visit of Prime Minister Modi, there has not been any progress on agreeing on the date for the foreign session talks. He said that given that the case, that it doesn't look like those talks will take place. But I don't think... This is not about the talks. That this is not just about the Bapit talks. It is really about an Indian... Mr. Zaidi, it's, it's, it's about an Indian investigation team coming to Pakistan to, you know, to do the further investigation of Matan Court. That has been virtually ruled out by your High Commissioner. Well, that's not how I understand uh, uh, High Commissioner Bhattu's statement. And if that's the case, I mean, that's unfortunate. I think that that team needs to visit uh, Pakistan. I think that the JIT process and the entire Patan Court dynamic is actually historic. And so uh, there's no reason for right-minded people to want to oppose that. And uh, and I'm actually quite confident that the uh, Patan Court investigation is going to lead to historic outcomes. Okay. Mr. Banerjee, you know, is, is this, we have been hearing about the historic historicity of the way that this entire Patan Court and, and subsequent events have come up. No, I, but, I, you know, I what is I, happening now? I wouldn't share, Mr. Zadi's optimism on this front on the you know joint intelligence sharing it is just barely made a start and i think we have both sides would have to travel a long way for trust to be established and some positive uh, progress to be made but on the issue of reciprocity it is possible as mr vikas sarup the indian foreign office spokesman mentioned that uh, mr basit may not have been aware of the um, you know the terms of reference of uh, the agreement for the joint uh, teams visit so or he may have made it off the bat just to indicate his impatience or the general impatience about which he may have been given a, a green signal to project. So, but on what the is this impatience? Why this impatience? The impatience is about you know why India is dragging its foot about uh, you know letting the two foreign secretaries meet uh, to announce a schedule for uh, the comprehensive talks on various issues. So that impatience is definitely there from the Pakistani side, and the army is very much on board that impatience. So I would think that this is all because of that. But on the issue of, you know, intelligence <coughs> sharing, I, I don't uh, feel very optimistic that, you know, uh, this is historic or that this would lead to something very positive. We can keep trying, no, but, no, but I don't was, think that... Sir, sir, one second. When when we were told a couple a month back, when the National Security Advisor of Pakistan was supposed to have told the, our NSA about some terrorists who have yes, come here, yes. a big song and dance was made about it. Well, we should not make a song and dance, but we should take uh, steps to, you know act on that intelligence, it's, maybe it's a good thing and we may have been able to prevent uh, some incidents or we may be in the process of preventing some incident. It's a start. But uh, we should not go uh, absolutely gaga about, uh, you know, this type of, uh, sh uh, you know, uh, sharing, ha making a big dent or making a big success. We should not uh, uh, be, be very complacent or at the same time, we should take it for what it is. More optimistic about yeah. this. Uh, Mr. Kajo? Mr. Kajo, you know, coming back, to, coming back to the basic question, you think now that now now we see what is happening, it is there is no doubt that whatever any, anybody might try to say that you know we have we have we are witnessing what is another very very uh, major low in the Indo-Pak ties. You think that all these events which have led to this, you know, there was uh, you started off saying that you know on wrong assumptions this whole thing was started. So you think that we should have taken it easy? You think that the Indian Prime Minister was hasty in going to, pa in, in, to Pakistan uh, to attend the, uh, to attend the, uh, you know, the, the birthday and all that? Do, look, would you, would I, you look I at it that way? This, that uh, the mistake made was to give concessions to the Pakistani generals uh, in respect of the UFA joint statement. I'm sure Mr. Chari would not perhaps agree with me. But the fact is that both on the question of exclusivity of terrorism, as well as the meeting with the Hurriyat, uh, concessions were made because of which the uh, talks that were to be held exclusively between the NSAs and in Delhi 
were shifted to Bangkok. And the foreign secretary was also present. Now, once having made the concessions, the Pakistani generals perhaps feel that Mr. Modi can be pushed. And if this impatience theory is accepted, then this is a one more alum, one more indication that they are pushing Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Modi. What are they saying? They are saying, we've delivered, we've sent the GIT, you should be satisfied with that. And now, please begin the Foreign Secretary talks so that uh, the comprehensive bilateral dialogue can begin. We've done enough on terrorism. To, to satisfy you, you should be satisfied with this. This and, is you know, where, and also, this is where so I think... One second, sir. The, no, 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 one please, second, I'll one second, one, this. sir, one second. This is you can where complete. I think the no, government no. is going wrong. No, yeah. okay. And, you know, also you, the High Commissioner's statement yesterday about, about you know, India having to accept the fact that it is, it is Kashmir which is the basic problem. No, no, that is old hat. That, any Pakistan High Commissioner will chant that. On that, uh, uh, he's, if he doesn't, then his, he, his uh, neck will be taken <laughs> in Pakistan. Okay. So on that, uh, that is old. I mean, I'm not particularly bothered. Uh, the army wants him to say it and he repeats that as a mantra. But the real issue is this, these questions of concessions. And Mr. Modi being pushed. Okay. Chari? No, I, I of course, uh, I value uh, Ambassador Kaju's views on all these things. And uh, if uh, he has an opinion that uh, the Prime Minister being pushed around or not taken too seriously on his attempts, uh, I think he must be having that is his perspective. But my own uh, perspective is that uh, it's not uh, entirely... Correct. It won't be entirely correct to say that we are being taken for a ride or that the Prime Minister is not under command and all these things. Unlike India, the Pakistani intelligence agency and other agencies which normally probe these issues are not under the hat of the Pakistani political establishment at all. So it is the army which controls. Wasn't this something and therefore, which was not known? Therefore, therefore, we will have to send a very strong signal to Pakistan and that is exactly what we are doing now. And I think Pakistan understands this, that we will continue to strengthen the political process, we will continue to do everything that is under our command to carry forward the peace process also. But at the same time, we will insist that we are ready to talk on everything under the sun, including Kashmir, but Pakistan will have to refrain from using either their territory or our territory or any other territory okay. under their occupation Banerjee, for terror activities. Mr. Banerjee, this is what we have easily conveyed Banerjee, to them very quickly. and I think they have understood it. Very quickly. So, th there is no issue or dispute the, with what is Mr. The, is, is saying in this regard. Can we say that the peace process is off? No, I wouldn't like to say that. In fact, I would like to suggest that we should not be deterred if once we have uh, taken a decision to engage, then the process of engagement, we should take the next logical step. And whenever we judge it to be correct, we should then take the next possible step. Okay, whenever that is, whenever whenever the, the time comes for a next logical step. But as of now, we have, as, as I said in the beginning, the Indo-Pak ties have reached a new low. We will wait and watch when it will again pick up momentum. Thanks to all my guests. Please keep watching. We will come back with another issue in the big picture, same time on Monday. Meanwhile, have a great weekend.